our second power rankings of the year. And you can see there on the bottom left of that image that the the list we had before the league started with Limerick at one, Clare at two, Kilkenny three, fourth and fifth were Galway and Tipperary, you had, uh, Cork, Watford, Dublin, and then 9, 10, and 11 were Wexford, Antrim, Carlo. So we're basically going with the teams that are going to be operating at Liam McCarthy Cup this year. There's other teams who would obviously say, well, we're as good as the teams towards the latter end of that table. And that's absolutely true. But just to keep the list a little bit simple, we're going Liam McCarthy only. Do you see any obvious change on this list? Um, you, you did mention there that the certain counties may be excluded because they're not Liam McCarthy. But you definitely would think you definitely have Westmead towards that tail end after beating Antrim, wouldn't you? And you'd probably have Offaly in around the mix maybe as well. Take the Cork roll, resu- result out. You'd probably have them around the mix down the bottom as well. As regards other counties that have made strides, uh, Wexford would definitely come up a couple of spots. They're still unbeaten this year. They've uh, you know beat Waterford. They've drawn with a, a couple of other big hitters as well. Drew with, drew with Clare. Like they're not just bringing... You know, solid form against other Leinster counties to the table. They're bringing good form against Munster counties to the table as well. A draw with Clare, who are obviously we have at number two, and a defeat of Waterford, who were two places ahead of him on the previous table. So definitely Wexford would definitely deserve to come up a couple of spots anyway. Yeah, I think Clare deserve to stay in number two. I mean, goes without saying that Limerick will be at number one. Like Clare have three wins and a draw from what we've seen so far. And this is without Tony Kelly. I'm not sure when Ryan Taylor is going to be back. You'd hope to, and not too long. Shane O'Donnell hasn't played just yet. They've broadened out their panel. There's a couple of good lads. Lean in the backs. He looks like a good lad. Rin around midfield. Like They've developed their panel a little bit more. So there's no reason to not have them at number two. I'm sure you'll agree. Yeah, no. And this has been probably Clare's best league campaign, I would say, since Brian Lowen's first year, when they got to that league final that was played as... Um, that was played as a Munster quarter final during mm. COVID. Like they've been very, very solid, as you say, with a hell of a lot of new faces in there. That's kind of that's really promising now. You'd have to say, I any mean, when they're in this position, they don't have any silverware yet. Uh, we kind of maybe said, you know, maybe a league title is not what Brian Lawn is looking for. But now that they have themselves in this position, um, I don't see why they'd really be holding back too much at this stage. They've got themselves in a really, really good position. You're two wins away from having silverware on the table with a lot of new faces. And I think whatever about 2024, I think that would have a fairly positive spin-off for those young fellas that are going to be there probably for the goods of the next decade. So now that they have themselves in a the position and it might be in a position they didn't plan to be in, I would probably say they'd go reasonably hard at it. Yeah, yeah. Column Lines Blind Spot says every single player on the treatment table at the moment will be playing for Clare versus Limerick first round. Lohan won't be able to resist. And why would he either? I don't think any team is going to go out and not put their best hand out, unless there's a serious injury at risk. You know, you want to win every game in Munster until a progression is assured. So I think every team will be going all out to win every game, especially the first couple of rounds until they kind of feel out what the situation is. Yeah, but the thing is about those guys that are on the treatment table, like I don't think, I don't think O'Donnell is on the treatment table. It's just really Kelly and, and Ryan Taylor. Ryan Taylor seems to be making pretty swift progress by all accounts he only got the operation i remember chatting to him down the Galway races last year he only got the operation after that and that's what we're looking at march now so it was august to march like that's pretty swift progress looking like he could mm. feature and like wh- why would brian lone resist like do you know what i mean you, you know 100 percent what you're going to get out of those guys even if they're not 100 percent on it you have a fair idea what you're going to get i don't think like sentiment kind of goes out the window a small bit when you're trying to get Munster Championship wins on the board. If they are able to get result against Limerick in the first game, they're it's obviously very competitive, but they're half set up for the remainder of the campaign. I've said it to you before, the, these guys that are coming in, it might necessarily be to start Munster Championship games this year, but it's the featuring games. They're, they will be far more better prepared to feature in games having played league and it it might be a championship start next year or the year after that's sometimes the way it works but why why would he resist like mm. you know what i mean shane o'donnell hasn't played a game since the all-ireland semi-final last year but you know that he's going to be bouncing there's no there's no um resisting anything it's just you know what you're going to get from these players on a given day so he's he'd be fully justified and i'm sure that the younger fellas within the squad know that as well. They grew up idolising Shane O'Donnell and Tony Kelly, and they know that there's a place there for them whenever they're fit, but they're going to do their best to keep them out for as long as they can. 
Yeah, Cormac Quaid says, fierce early start, lads. Did you wet the bed? Uh, did you over there, the hotel, big swanky hotel over in Cheltenham? <laughs> Far from swanky. It's, uh, it, gets, it gets the job done now. I was down for the breakfast before I jumped on here. But uh, I don't think, uh, the first race to half one today, I don't think I'd be, I'd be, uh, I'd be able to do uh, a show here from a, busy pre- from a busy press room, as you say, with maybe with some lads poking their heads off each other in the background. <laughs> the, the, uh, would you be seeing many GEA heads over there? Yeah, lots actually. Um, was chatting to who was I chatting to the other night? Chatting Nigel Skeen from All Auckland Gales. He was involved with All Auckland this year. Kieran Kingston is around. Nicky English is around. Um, oh, there's lots of GA heads around. It's kind of I don't know racing and racing and GA kind of go kind of hand in hand really. And yeah, Kieran Morris from Mike Carkey Boris. I meet him in the hotel every year here. He's a former Tip Underage uh, star. Obviously, I would you meet you meet you meet a lot of people, yeah. Richard Hogan, avid follower of the show. I met him the other day. He I had my back turned and he kind of came up and frightened the PGs to sound like to be honest with you. Um, but I was chatting to him. I didn't realize actually that he has a, a very successful balloon business. So if anyone around the southeast uh, area needs balloons, Richard Hogan, regular viewer of the show, is your man. Well, like what sort of balloons are we talking about for kids' parties or are we talking hot air balloon? <laughs> well he ha- Richard has a lot of hot air himself now to be fair but um yeah no like you know the displays you'd see for could be for a christening or for a party or something like that you know you, or even for a wedding probably where you walk under balloons um Richard is your man there you go Richard I can't do any more for you than that so the our game followers are full of hot air who knew <laughs> who knew and the- and presenters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Column Lines Blind Spot. Tip Beat and Clare last year made a touch and go for Limerick to qualify from Munster. Can't see that happening this year. Will Limerick and Clare qualify a bit easier this time around? God, I wouldn't think so. I think it's every game's going to be puck of a ball again. The thing about that as well is um, Limerick were on the back foot for the rest of Munster because they had a defeat early. Was that the second yeah. game? So um, The first or the second game? The I, first I, game I, was Waterford, wasn't it? Yeah, so... The day of your if, wedding, of course. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If there's um if there's a winner of if there's a winner in that game, someone's on the back foot and someone's on the front foot. Do you know what I mean? You're you're on zero points and you can't afford to lose another game. If it's a draw, they're both in a half decent spot, but you're behind the eight ball if you lose that game. That's why that's why, you know. Tony Kelly won't have any match practice under his belt, which is a slight worry because I there's differences. You know the way there's differences between players. I think Shane O'Donnell will, will fit back in no problem because he's used to it. I think Kelly takes a couple of games to get going generally. Um, and he saw that a couple of years ago when he was coming back from an injury. So whether he'll be fully at the fo- at the pitch the first day, I'm not so sure. Limerick will definitely be at the pitch. I think they'll realise that. Even the Waterford game last year had them on the back foot. Clare put them further on the back foot. And then they were kind of scraping for, you know, inches the whole way until they got through. I think Limerick will be particularly targeting that game down in Cusick and trying to get two points on the board. And not that you can relax for the rest of the Munster. You definitely can't. But you put yourself in a decent spot. Mm. Yeah, do you know what? Your wedding was the year before. It was yes. the Wexford-Limerick game. And, or Wexford, yeah, Waterford-Limerick game first round. Trying to it was the Wall. Um, um, which you were watching on your phone and then put out a tweet that went kind of nuclear almost. It was like, <laughs> yeah, what, what was it? Something to do with like Waterford couldn't get it done when they had their strongest team out, and Limerick obviously had injuries. And didn't Keen Lynch go off injured in that game? Was it like it was like a huge failure or something like that? that yeah. I don't know, whatever I was saying. And then and you, you, you just you just sat back and watched your ass grow. <laughs> I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Column Lines is back in again uh, saying, are we a small bit harsh on Clare to say they have to win something this year while at the same time saying Limerick are the greatest of all time? Doesn't seem fair for the Banner boys. But it's I think it's more that they have to win it because it's now or never. Because the age profile is getting very close to just going past. You know, it might spoil fairly soon. Yeah, no, like... Uh, sport is kind of cruel enough at times in the sense of, like, if Brian... And Brian Lone has done some brilliant things with Clare. Like, Dave whatever about the, the senior team, I think he's kind of universally agreed down there that he's kind of unified the county almost as well. And uh, like, you can't get into the nuts and bolts of it, but he's done a hell of a lot of things behind the scenes that have helped completely lift the mood in Clare. But if if his fifth year is done and there's not something to show for it, and I, 
And that something can't just be, I'd say, running, you know, Limerick with an inch of their lives in the best Munster final of all time. It probably needs to be a little bit more than that. So, like a league title, a Munster title, obviously on All Ireland would be would be unbelievable. But getting something on the table would be very, very important in my view. Okay, I'm going to bring up, I kind of took a little bit, in, a, a few liberties here and filled out the table a small bit. We'll see what you make of it. I kind of took a few liberties and filled out the whole table without <laughs> conferring. <laughs> Limerick, Clare, Tipperary, uh, say you've been generous enough there. Tipperary, Kilkenny, Galway, Cork, Wexford, Dublin, Waterford. Um, there's no way I'd have, there's no way I'd have Dublin ahead of Waterford. And uh, I'd probably, I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably have Carlo ahead of Antrim as well, because Carlo are definitely going to be playing Division One hurling next year, and Antrim aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joad, I just, I threw some of them in there as a little bit, little rogues, just to see how you'd react to them. To be fair, Carlo, Arnold. basically, you thought I'd agree, and then you'd be like, "Oh no, no, no!" But what about this? Should they not be there? I think, <laughs> like, Antrim, Antrim have, outside of that Dublin game have probably sh- struggled a, a bit this year, and that's probably only natural with the with the players that they're missing. Well, well Carlo look, have been brilliant into it. Mm, putting what, putting it like this, uh, like. Who's going to come out of Munster as far as you're concerned? Like, so I've nailed my colours to the mast there. Um, they'd probably be the three I would go for, as you'd say, in the heat, in the heel of the hunt. Yeah. Still not, not a hundred percent sure with Cork, and maybe things will start humming a bit better. And I, you know, I know to beat my own county, um, very, very convincingly last weekend. But Cork will do that to inferior opposition. It's what they'll do to or how they'll perform against opposition of a similar standard, that, that is the worry, really. Um, so I would probably go with something similar. I'd probably go with the same tree as last year at the minute. Yeah, and like a comment here again from Colm Lyons Blindspot, tip ahead of Kilkenny is questionable. Uh, Kilkenny are guaranteed an All-Ireland uh, spot, Tipperary or not. And Sean O'Sullivan says, I predict what will be the first team out of Munster, out of the country, under holidays, while the rest of the teams are still in it. Um, Just Shane, on that, oh, Shane, as well, like yeah. I know... Davey said the other day to, to judge Waterford on their championship and not their league. Like if the championship doesn't go well, like is, is that the like is that the end of the road? If the championship goes like like it did last year and they're in one B next year for 2025, like he's under he's probably put a bit of pressure on himself, I'd say, going into the championship. Um and that, that game against Cork is huge. You know, if Cork if Cork don't get a result there, they're really on the back foot coming up against the, the top three from last year in the remaining games. Similar from a Waterford perspective, if they don't get a result there, if you have a, if you have a two points on the board after that first game, you, you, you fancy your chances of getting something out of the last three games. Maybe a draw, maybe two draws, maybe a win against one of them. But if you're if you're coming into those uh, next three games against you know the three that came out last year with zero points, you're under big pressure. Like so, I've put three monster teams, one, two, and three here because I think that no matter who comes through, a monster team is going to win the All Ireland. So I think you can justifiably do that. Limerick, I fancy to win monster, come through straight to semi final, and I do think Kilkenny will probably win monster again. Even though I, a bit like you know, we're talking about Leinster. Gar- Leinster, Jesus, Kilkenny win a monster would be a sight now. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> I don't think that that would be possible even if they were in it. But like, I do think that. Um, the way we're talking about Clare, that it's now or never. I feel the same about Galway. So, like, they really should go and win Mon- Leinster this year. I'm not saying that they definitely will or anything like that, but it's a it's year three for Henry Shefflin. They have plenty of quality players. Like, they have to get it done at this stage. But, I don't know, like, and obviously they beat Tipperary last year. Don't get me wrong. I'm fully aware of that. They do have a lot of quality on a given day, but can they back it up? And the way they faded out against Limerick in the semi final, lots of teams do that. Don't get me wrong, Limerick do that to everybody. But I don't know. They sh- they should be pushing a lit. Like, yeah. What what do you think yourself? Like they should be pushing Kilkenny at this stage. Oh, should, they should be winning Leinster the last couple of years, but they they haven't. Um, let, let's call it a spade a spade. This isn't exactly a golden Kilkenny team either. It's a Kilkenny team that would perform to a level most days, but it's not. A golden team like imagine you'd said that after Galway beat uh after Galway beat Kilkenny fairly convincingly in that Leinster final replay down in Turles in 2018 that they wouldn't have won another Leinster title since like it's bizarre really like for the talent for the talent that they have like and yeah like 
if Henry doesn't get like an Leinster title on the board this year, and which would clear a path through to an All Ireland semi final as well to potentially avoid Limerick until a final if they were to get there, he's under a bit of pressure as well because uh, it's one thing saying like and him signing for another couple of years or whatever. But they need to. They needs to be get something tangible on the board, and they don't have anything at the minute, and that's a worry. And I thought he works not going to be around forever. David Burke's not going to be around forever. Connor Cooney's not going to be around from forever. Um. Like Johnny Glynn's not going to come back from the States or rejoin the squad forever as well. Like these are things that are have a very, very short window, I would say. So they need to make hay now too. Like it's essentially like looking at the Galway team, it's still the bulk of that 2017 team. Like that's that's seven years ago now. Um uh, to say they've added very little in terms of silver since then is very disappointing from their regard. And there is a bit of pressure on this year. Um they had a Leinster title in their grasp last year, let it slip. Um it's just it's frustrating because you know the talent is there. That's the, that's the really if we put if we put Galway's first fifteen down on paper, it, it matches up unbelievably favourably with any other team in the country. But they just haven't been getting the results. Yeah, Paul Young says Clare can't perform at Croke Park for whatever reason. Shane Power says you can't have Kilkenny ahead of Tip. Tip haven't done anything in nearly five years. Whereas Kilkenny have been in two All Irelands in a row. Here's my question: Is is that argument solely based on? Kilkenny are in the weaker province. So, I mean, if they were to come up head-to-head, who, who do I think will win this year? I think Tipperary would win if they go head-to-head and knock out championship. And also, I think Tipperary will get through. So that that's why I would have Tipperary ahead of them. But it's not that Tipperary have done a load in the last few years. Um, do you want to settle that one off, just in terms Will we square that one off? Or do you, are you still thinking Kilkenny should be ahead? I, I tell you what, I haven't been exactly too impressed with what I've seen with Kilkenny so far this year either um seems to be a bit of a there's a there's a fairly um a fairly strong concern amongst Kilkenny folk as well about probably the lack of cohesiveness in their play what way they're actually playing um that they're going back to the well with similar players in similar positions maybe that haven't worked in big games over the last couple of years like Mikey Carey slipped in I think number six the, the last day a uh, very good player I don't know if he's you know, an obvious number six though, really. Um, and it'd be interesting to see who they play there at the weekend. Um, Limerick have probably got a bit of joy out with Richie Reid the last couple of years. Kilkenny haven't had a settled midfield pair. And there's a fair few question marks. Um, they have been in all Ireland finals the last two years though. So I, I would still have them. I would still have them ahead of tip based on what they've done. They beat Clare, be Clare in the last two all Ireland semi-finals. They're going for five in a row in Leinster. Um, would Tip be going for five in a row in Leinster? Most certainly not. Um, and would Tip have made an All Ireland final last year, even from Leinster? Most certainly not. Um, be clear in the championship. They, they did, yeah. There was a few caveats with that now. <laughs> yeah, but that's because Tipperary ran out of road energy wise. If they were going through Leinster, they can sort of use their panel far more. Yeah, may, maybe so. They, they definitely wouldn't have done Check five. In a row. They definitely wouldn't have done five in a row in Leinster because twenty twenty two was an absolute. Uh, what did they call it? Anis Horribilis? Is that what they say? Um, they, definitely wouldn't, they definitely wouldn't have done I five think I had one of those after a bad curry, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just... Um, I still have Kilkenny ahead of Tipperary based on what they've done in Championship for the for the last four, three, four years, I'd say. Okay, then what about uh, Wexford, Dublin, Cork, Watford? Um, I the same question still remain with Cork at the minute. I'd be, I'd be happy enough with, with where they are. I, I'd say if they played Wexford in a championship game, I'd probably be still fancying Cork to narrowly win that game. Um, if Cork played Galway, yeah, I'd probably be still be fancying Galway to narrowly beat them like they did in twenty twenty two. Just yeah, there's um, there's a few question marks hanging over Cork again going into going into this year's championship and. I think the lack of consistency is definitely uh would definitely be a worry for me anyway, just thinking like if you are to confidently, you know, think Cork are gonna get out gonna get out of Munster, just like on their day they can go toe to toe with anybody and can cut loose on anybody, but on their day they can also not show up and you know, be very, very I don't know, flaky is the word, but you're not hundred percent sure what you're gonna get at a given time. Yeah, Dublin got to an All-Ireland quarter-final last year. Didn't go well against Clare, obviously. But the feeling this year with... Like, they have Chris Crummy back, but 
you know, Keen Boland is gone, Chris O'Leary is gone. They have a couple of injuries. If they come right, they'll still be strong for championship. But there is a feeling that they'll probably slip behind Wexford this year. Do you still feel that, like, in terms of talent, I think Watford should definitely be ahead of Dublin. But it's just the way it's going at the moment. And just Dublin's prospects in Leinster should be that bit stronger. I thought the last time we did this that we were taking the provinces out of it. Or am I, am I thinking of something else? And we kind of were, but sure, look, this is a fluid thing. <laughs> very, very. It's like the game now. If positions are fluid. You can play oh, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I still have Waterford ahead of, I still have Waterford ahead of Dublin all day, twice on Sunday. Now, if, if you're talking about in terms of, in terms of talent, I don't, I don't think it would look right to have Dublin ahead of Waterford, been, on, been honest with you. But Wexford would be. Wexford would be yeah, and obviously beat them, beat them only. Is that last weekend? Weekends are merging into one now at this stage. It was yeah. last weekend, yeah. Um, and the Wexford are undefeated as well. I wouldn't be losing the run of yourself with Wexford either, you know, and you know putting them up three or four or something based on what we've seen so far. But you know, I think I think Waterford people looking at the Wexford game on Sunday. We were chatting John Milan the other day, and he was just saying. There was a degree of envy from Waterford people looking at how Wexford were playing the other day. Just how, like, they put up 223 the other day. Wexford put up 223 the other day without Lee Chin. Like, that's actually... Or like, Rory O'Connor. Yeah, and obviously there's plenty of... Uh, and Conor McDonald and Lee Mogg McGovern. You know, Jack, that's, Jack O'Connor. Yeah, like, that's really, really promising for, again, not just this year, but the years to come as well, to know that they are... And I think Darry Egan deserves a bit of credit because he blooded a lot of the guys that are kind of thriving now, much like Parik Fannin did in Waterford in 2019. And it might not have went well, but a lot of those guys were the mainstays in 20 when they got to the final in 21, when they got to the semi-final. But you'd have to say, from a extra point of view, it does look it does look promising. Um, I think they're themselves and Limerick are the only two unbeaten teams in the country at the minute. If um, So we're both kind of saying that we think uh, Tip will get out of Munster. If both Tip and Kilkenny get out of their province, who's more likely to win in All Ireland this year? And I'll add in the same with Galway. Throw the three of those into the mix because it's the order of them three that's causing us the issue here. Um, who's more likely to win the All Ireland? Um, well, that that's where the the provincial thing probably does come in. You're probably thinking, I no, think if all it, three get out, so that takes the provincial thing out of it. Yeah, but it, it, but if all three get out, I'd say Tipperary are getting out in third place, and then they're playing a preliminary, and then they're playing a quarter final, and then they're playing a semi final. Where but think generally, the preliminary is a bit of a non event. For okay. when it's, if someone like Tipperary or Cork or Clare or Limerick are in it anyway, it's still another game, and then they have to play a quarter final, and then so to me, they're going a longer passage. I would say to to get through. Like I'd still, you're saying Galway, you know, should win Leinster this year. I'd probably still have Kilkenny as favourites to win Leinster realistically. Because they seem to be able to get the job done, so that would put them in a, a, a kind of a direct route through. Whereas Tipper, Tipperary are going to have to go maybe a more convoluted route and could find a very very tricky quarter final like they did last year against Galway. Who's who's more likely to win the All Ireland? Um, I would say Kilkenny are more likely to win the All Ireland than Tipperary. Okay, you've made a compelling case with the with the longer route if Tipperary don't get into the top three. And to be honest, look, I think it's going to be a puck of a ball. Cork could get through as well if they come right at the right time. It could be them as well. So you're some yoke. You put Tipperary in three, and it didn't take that much of an argument for me to get them down to five. <laughs> I know. Look, to be fair, I do think quality wise, if Tipperary were to come up against, um, and I know you can definitely point to Galway having a good record against Tip in recent times. I think if Tip come up against Galway or Kilkenny in the championship this year, and there isn't a raft of injuries, if both teams come in fully loaded, sorry, if, whether it's uh, Galway or Kilkenny, I think Tipperary would win this year. Okay. Okay, fair, fair enough. Yeah. But for the moment, you, you make a coherent argument, which I don't always say, to be, <laughs> to be fair. I'm usually not the most coherent, to be fair. 